Olivego theory provides an explanation for some common symptoms such as chronic, persistent and debilitating anxiety and depression by explaining how our nervous system is connected to our emotional responses. To help us understand the Polyvago theory, let me introduce you to our nervous system. Imagine that you wake up in the morning, get dressed and make tea or coffee and get ready for the day. As you leave the house, you notice something on your arm. Your heart starts racing. You feel as if you cannot breathe for a couple of seconds. Is it a spider? Is it the scarf you're wearing? Should you just get on with your day? Should you be scared and scream? Should you slap your arm to get rid of whatever you have on your arm? Your nervous system processes everything that happens from the moment you notice something on your arm to the moment a decision is made about what to do. This decision will depend on a number of factors including your past and recent experiences. So, if you are scared of spiders, or if you watched a movie about deadly spiders last night, or if you live in an area where there are poisonous spiders, your nervous system is more likely to react as if you are under threat. The autonomic nervous system is part of our nervous system, and it monitors and regulates the functioning of the visceral organs, including our heartbeat and our breath, and is a major contributing factor to our emotional state. The autonomic nervous system is formed by the sympathetic division, which mobilizes the body into action, and the parasympathetic division, which relaxes the body and talks it down when there is no danger and you are safe. Both the sympathetic and the parasympathetic divisions are involved in how we respond to stress and survival behaviors. The autonomic nervous system has three basic states. Rest and digest state, which is controlled by the parasympathetic system, also known as the ventral vagal state. It is our state of safety, when we are grounded and can engage and connect with the world and other people. The fight and flight state is our survival response controlled by the sympathetic nervous system. When we are in this state, we may feel angry, raged and frustrated towards something or someone preparing us to fight with it or we may experience anxiety, fear and panic. Any of these responses prepare us for action to either run away from the threat or to fight with it. We go into low levels of sympathetic activation every day. As we walk, as we work, we relate to people, and when we face daily common small challenges. In these cases, we generally move between the ventral vagal and the sympathetic states. And lastly, the freeze state, which is controlled by our parasympathetic system, although the role is different than above. It is also known as dorsal vagal state. It is an emergency state and our most primitive response. The purpose of this state is to conserve energy for the most basic functions. When we are in this state, we have a tendency to stillness and we may shut down completely, to sleep, repair, slow down and recover to help us go back into action when we are ready to do so. The ventral vagal, sympathetic and dorsal vagal states work like a ladder, where the ventral vagal state is at the top, the sympathetic state is in the middle, and the dorsal vagal state is at the bottom. Throughout the day, we move between the different states, up and down the ladder, depending on what we are doing. When we are in a stressful situation and overwhelmed, we are likely to go into dorsal vagal state. When we are calm and we feel safe, we go up the ladder into our ventral vagal state. The three states have an important role in our well-being and survival. Our nervous system has an inherent tendency towards homeostasis and balance. So the state we are in helps us navigate and cope with whatever we're going through at the time. We, involuntarily, scan situations and people to determine if they are safe or dangerous. And we move up or down the polyvagal ladder depending on whether our nervous system detects cues that indicate that we are safe or cues of danger. People who have experienced trauma and difficult situations in their lives, people who grew up in environments where their basic needs weren't met or were abused as a child, are likely to spend more time in the dorsal vagal state, the freeze state. Experiencing symptoms such as low mood, anxiety, social isolation, and feelings of helplessness and hopelessness. The good news is that we can retrain our nervous system to start noticing cues of safety around us and to reduce the reaction our nervous system tends to have in the presence of certain cues of danger.
which are often related directly or indirectly to the trauma or difficult experiences we've had. One of the first steps is learning to identify the state we are in at any given time so that we can seek what we need to help our nervous system go back to a state of safety. There are strategies that can help you navigate the different states and give yourself what you need depending on the circumstances and your nervous system response. These strategies include adjusting your breath, your posture, your movements, and the information that comes through your five senses, but there are many more. So next time you feel anxious, angry, overwhelmed, or you just want to withdraw from everything, sleep, disconnect, and spend some time alone, Remember that your nervous system is doing its best to get you through the circumstances that you are in. And also remember that giving your nervous system what it needs will help you go back to feeling safe and engaged with what's important to you.